and we are live welcome ladies to champs memory lane and in this episode we will be talking about girls champs of course a few nights ago we did boys champs so tonight is for the ladies and with me i have champ standout Aileen Bailey, world champion and Olympic champion. And we have Celine Campbell, formerly of St. Mary's High School. Welcome, ladies, and let us get into it. Girls Champs is, Girls Champs started in 1957, almost 66, 67 years ago. Um, I want to ask a quick question to start. Why do you think Girls' Champs was never able to get the attention that the boys are now getting before the merger of Boys and Girls' Champs? Celine, you can start. Sure. All right. So good night, everyone. Um, I'd want to say that maybe then or earlier then, athletics was considered a... Uh, strong point for males more than it was for females so persons would believe that you would equate running with the men so they were in more support of the men than they were of the women maybe that has something to do or that plays a major role i'd say in one of the reasons why it is that boys champs was more favored and got more support than the girls did Aileen? Yeah, I'll, I'll say the same thing. And also, um, most of the schools that were participating were, were, were all boys' school. And their um, alumni association is, like, strong. So they always come out in, like, drones. And then if you're a female and you marry into that, um, that, that family, then you support that school. And then most of the girls' schools literally would go to boys' champs to support the boys. So, and then the girls really didn't have that. And then um financial backing as well so it's like a series of different different things um that the girl women didn't have access to um which is why now they're like um doing a lot more for women's sport women in sport um because even up till now like men literally gets more um attention and more um support than the, the women in sport i was just about to say that um can we say that male sport gets more planning, more organization, more of the resources than female sport? Yeah, they do because like men have like it's like the the, the rivalry between men because you know it's like the testosterone and you know where they they have like they have like this build up and they talk and smack and trash and talk all of them stuff and it's hyped up. When a female do that, it's like, whoa, kind of too much, you know, doing too much, you know, you need to be a girl and girly and tone it down. But this is just the hype that you get from the men and then the competition and the boys are like running across the line and celebrating and shoot like, um, I guess we can't do that anymore. Like the, the gun finger sl sliced off the head type thing, you done. know, it's just cold, you know. You know them sell it's it's selling it's, sell, it's selling that male testosterone aggression and stuff so um i think that's it and we just more like we're best friends type of situation <laughs> celine do you think that we are forced to suppress celebrating as female athletes i no i wouldn't say so well not in this in contemporary society i would not say so i believe that well, naturally, females have a way of maybe holding back as how they'd like to showcase themselves once crossing the line or have, for example, a signature style that they'd use. Maybe it's within them. It's maybe a natural habit or as you feel like, OK, I'm a female, I shouldn't be doing this. Or as Aileen rightly said, it will be seen as doing too much. But however, you, there are still those athletes who feel free to just do whatever it is to celebrate themselves one day once they've won. So I, I wouldn't say there's any holding back or they are being suppressed it all comes down to the individual and maybe what they decide to do because i experienced this not personally but it was for one of my friends like she she ran across the line she won and she put up she was like this 
she came across Len and she signaled with the, the first place. And someone commented on the post saying that she was basically doing a bit too much. But I'm like, she won. Why not just allow her to do it? Males can do it. So what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. Unfair, right? Alien, Central Jamaica has been dominating girls champs from day one. You went to Ver Technical. Ver Technical won 21 titles, 15 straight at what one point. What was the secret at Ver Technical for Ver Technical to be leading with 21 titles? The thing is, you know, when you're at Ver, now, like practice is literally champs. <laughs> and you always have somebody pushing you. And um and 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 we um our training regime is like built for us to be sustain us throughout the, the entire year. So um and you you have all the we have like support that we need. Like we literally had like a doctor on um on the dorm. We had like a person that cooks our food, Miss Emily. Um, even though we hate a lot of chicken. Um, so, we, but, um, it's just nutrition, um, the rival, the friendly rivalry that we had amongst each other, um, and the level of support that we had, it's just, you know, practice, you come with a practice, you have to secure your spot because, um, you know, a little young, somebody might come and take it. So you have to like secure it, but not, um, in the manner where you're going to discourage the younger one that's coming up. Cause you know, once you leave, you know, they're going to come up. So you have to make sure you encourage them. You have to make sure you give them a little bit, but not too much. <laughs> Just so enough. You, so you guys had like a system at Veer Technical where you, the, the seniors, would mentor the younger athletes in order to continue the tradition or the dominance. Yeah, definitely. Because um, because because when when um the younger ones came, because even when Veronica came, she was shy and she she used to like. She refuses. It to, she usually refused to pass the seniors in practice, and we have to like. You need to. If we're idling, go around. Are we talking? Are we talking about the same Veronica Campbell Brown, one of Jamaica's most yeah. decorated athletes? Wow. Yeah, because when most when most of our younger kids come in, like they're seniors, they see the seniors. So I guess it's like a level of respect. So if we're being lazy, they're gonna not want to show us out. But we literally have to tell them, you know, if we're slacking, you know. You know, the spot is there. But the thing is, you know, they're not going to take our spot because we're always like a year above them. So, but if we're slack enough, you know, and it, it was re it was really good. It was eye-opening for us because the younger ones are, are pushing us because we tend to slack off as the seniors because, you know, you know, they you know, but guys then when they started numbers. pushing us, it made us want to work. So like literally, um, like the couple of years that I had Veronica, I'm training with it literally helped me throughout those years of champs because I was like this little girl is like really good and she uh, yeah and um, we just push each other at practice um, and it worked out well for us because after I left she took over um, when she left the younger person below her took over so it's just like a chain reaction of just passing the bat baton on without like suppressing their skills and just encourage them to be the best that they can be. Celine, you went to St. Mary's High. St. Mary's High is one of the girls' drum school that is on a pedestal. And this came from the likes of Jackie Pusey, Lily Hodges, Nicole Mitchell. You being a part of that legacy where your school won girls' drums twice. Tell me a little bit about you know, your feeling being at St. Mary and how that encouraged you to get into track and field? So to be honest, my, my decision to join track and field or at the time that I joined track and field, I had no idea that we've ever won girls' jumps because wow. I mean, ever be, since being there and even while I was in primary school and I was always watching boys and girls' jumps, Frankly speaking, nobody never hear about St. Mary High winning anything or you're not seeing them in the finals. So you're like, huh, where does... So in my head, it was, we had the hype at Eastern Champs. But then uh. I learned that we won Girls Champs twice, but that was like in 1976, 1975. Mm -hmm. So that's a long time, long before I was born. So it's not something that is often 
like we're reminded of it often i should say and i think it has a lot to do with us not being a strong strong team in order to compete at that level at boys and girls so we are more hyped up for the eastern champ so that's where we remember that hey we are stars here so we have to come out and we have to perform not that we are not encouraged to perform at boys and girls but if it is that you make a finals just to make a finals at boys and girls it's really a big thing but at the end of the day it's like we have that mindset that we're not going to win because the team isn't that strong enough but if as an individual personal you can make it to the finals then that's enough to put our school out there but it wasn't something that we championed being the two times girls winners at girls champs there are some schools that um they teach the culture of winning once you go to those schools, you'll know that they have won champs. And I've heard it before that St. Mary's High doesn't really promote um, winning champs or some of the outstanding athletes because they've had a number of athletes that have gone on to become Olympians. And as I said before, Jackie Pusey being one of them, making the Olympic team at age 16. But just to segue to another question, Central Jamaica rules girls' champs. Celine, what do you think the rest of the region is not doing that Central Jamaica is doing? So the likes of Veer, the likes of Homewood, the likes of Edwin Allen. Why is it that corporate Jamaica, Kingston and its environs, St. Mary, the East, and so forth, what is it that you guys are not doing that Central Jamaica seem to be getting right? I think what Central Jamaica is getting right is that discipline that is needed on the field and off the field. Now, it, yes, the training program has a lot to do with it, you know, so the coach can be good as gold, but if the team is not recipient of that, is not receiving that program well, then it's likely that you will see it reflecting in their performance. Now, I believe that Central has it in terms of, as I mentioned, discipline on field and off the field. So their training, and it's like they have... They are just, how should I say, power. They are hungry for winning. That you see it in the way they go out there and they perform. I'm seeing these young girls running some time. I'm like, what the hell? I I could not. I could not during my time. So I'm saying that these it's like they are training like they train like they never won and they run like they've never lost before. So it's really something that's stunning. And I think, as I said, it really has to do with the discipline and them receiving that program that is being given to them. You are right. And I'm sure that Aileen nodding her head is in agreement um, with, with you on that. But there's another question I want to ask, though, pertaining to that. Um, St. Mary High got a taste of the pie twice, back to back. Um, you said you did not know about that when you got into champs. What was your preparation like um, coming into champs? And after that, Aileen can tell, me, tell us what her preparation is like. All right, so I remember my first year going to boys and girls, and I must say that I was extremely nervous because, as I said, not much is really expected from St. Mary at Leeds by the general audience when they go there at boys and girls. And I was told by my teammates that they, they made me scared. They made me extremely nervous. Like, for example, they'd say, that girl in a lane seven, a girl in two, she's body now, and a sheen in your ears. Girl, I'm gonna know, oh, yeah, go do this. And it was like that. And I'm like, why are you guys doing this? This is my first time. If you say this to me, how do you expect me to feel? So, to be honest, my first time, I was extremely nervous. And it's like I had this doubt. Worse, I was placed in lane eight because I ran the 200 in my first year. I was placed in lane eight. And I didn't even, like, the name of the athletes didn't manage to scare me, just the school alone. Like, knowing that someone from Edwin is in your eat, someone from Vera is in your eat. Then you're like, oh, I'm doomed. Wow. So I was pretty nervous that I didn't get that girl go out there and just do your best, you know, because it was more of who was in the race rather than focusing on what I could do as an athlete. Aileen. Oh, so the year I went to there, I had the Inez sisters. So <laughs> the wow. Turner sister, the Turner sister, why am I calling Inez? <laughs> the Turner sisters. When I went to here, I had the Turner sister, and I think Lassina was, I think at Lassina last year. Lassina, so I, had, I think so. Yeah. 
So the, yeah, so 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 being so being introduced to the team with those caliber athletes, I mean, the, the only thing you can do is be great. <laughs> So, um, and then preparation for champs is like, we're a very technical high school. We're, we're coming in to defend our title. We don't lose. We take no prisoner. Failure is not an option. So, so go ahead, go ahead. So, so we were prepped like that and we had coaches like um, Coach Houghton and he don't play. Like he, do, he doesn't believe in us doting ourselves or having fear of anyone or anything. You know, and, and that's what he instilled in us. Um, um, and then we had, uh, then we had just just the the community like Viertek. When we were going to champs, you would think it was like some celebrity. Go the entire neighborhood came out with like pots and pans and everything, and it was like a whole send off party for us. So we we had like a whole the entire Clarendon, even though there was other school in Clarendon, you would think there is the only school that was there. Mm -hmm. There was Clarendon had like a, College at we the had, time. We had a full send. Every time we leave for champs, we have a send-off. The streets are lined with people just pat and pan and waving and telling us good luck and stuff. And the bus pack with like grown food and because wherever we stayed, we we somebody cooks so grown food and everything set for us. So we had the mindset that we were we we, we were going to champ. We were killers going to champ. We were, we were going to war, and we have to win, and we have to come back with something. Funny enough, and that's how in the discussion. Sorry to cut you, but in the discussion Monday night, Ricardo Chambers actually said the same thing. He said it's hard to compete against a team and do well if they are well cared for. So he was even saying when you go to the champs camp and a man asleep in a nice bed and you have to grab a piece of cardboard and sleep on that. When morning come, you're paying up on everything. So if your team is not, if your team is not properly cared for and prepared for, then the other team is going to, um, to outdo you. And that's what I hear with what you're saying, Ailey, with the food, the send off party, all of that. So why wouldn't they win? You guys yeah, but the thing, the craziest thing is that we really never have bed bed, you know, we brought our, because the dorms, we had bunk bed and it had these, um, the foam, like these, the foam mattress foam, thingy. Yeah, these foam mattress thingy. So you literally just take your bed <laughs> and care with you. And we stayed at, I think we stayed at the police officers club. They have like a big, um, so the girls had like their own little auditorium area and then the boys had theirs and we we just camp up like pile pack and we sleep but we had fun though like we enjoyed it and and sometimes we to make it more comfortable a couple of us will like double our mattress and then uh, we, we sleep um at an angle so that we have like four and then we spread get like a big sheet and turn it into like a king size bed so that you know, four hour we can because a king size we were like little scrawny kids. A king size bed can't fit all of us comfortably. So no. we made the best of the situation. So it you know, it is it is very interesting listening to you ladies with the whole preparation and going into chance. So <laughs> when you guys pack up and leave home like the weekend before or the Monday before chance and come into Kingston. It is a big carnival, having fun, competing. And tell me a little bit about that um, experience. Celine, you want to go first? Well, yeah. So, uh, chance time, we, we had the privilege of staying at a hotel in Kingston. So, we were excited for that, of course. And it was all inclusive somewhat. So wow. We liked that. So when we, when we were to leave, because we usually leave on Tuesday, on Monday, on Monday, mm -hmm. for some of us who would be competing in the, the events that would be held on the Tuesday, we would, we would have left from the Monday. So okay. we were super excited, you know, hotel and it's like we got this break, we get this break from school. So we were super excited for that. But then you know that Tuesday is the day. So we had to get into preparation and we had to made sure that our mindset and our body was intact so even though we were excited about the hotel part of it once we remembered what we were really there for 
then you know you get that sort of anxiousness coming in but at the same time you just wanted to go out there and do your best because imagine you being that one from saint mary who put saint mary high school on the podium then that is something that would stand out for you so it was excitement a, a, a bittersweet moment at the end of it i'd say wow interesting and i'm sure aileen feel the same way um the merger of champs in 1999 celine you weren't born yet in 1999 mm -hmm. the merger of champs and the women started to get some glory and um, now champs is at a certain level where it is the hardest event in jamaica to get into what is it about this event that jamaicans and visitors from all walks of life will fly or sail to be in jamaica for champs i mean it's it's jamaica it's the vibe you see how you have you ever watched boys and girls jump lady you see the vibe everybody wants that energy everybody wants to feel off that feed off that energy everybody wants to have that confidence that we have when that like our athletes have when they step out on the trap and it's like a fashion show the girls them have different ear color and ear style and the boys have different things that they're doing and it's just it's just a whole vibe and it's like even though it's a championship it's like a full the stand is like a full-blown party you know so it's just the energy and the vibe and people feed off good and positive energy and that's just how as a as Jamaican as a culture, that's what we do. Like people feed off our vibe and energy, and that's what Champ is. Aileen, you would have been a part of Champs before the merger and after, right? You left very yes. technical 99? Yes. No, I left ninety nine. Ninety nine. So left you, the year we merged. Right. So you would have gotten the taste of both world. How different was it for you? It was different because then I got to see my um because I've I've been making junior teams. So I got to see my, my male friends compete. Like actually got to see them and because you know what boys champs was different. So very tech now I'm gonna make a leave school to come watch. <laughs> I can't afford to come all the way from Clarendon to come watch uh, my friends compete. Um so I was able to watch my, my, my male friends compete and they were able to like and then so because we had all I ha we had all those relationships from character games, those boys schools were like cheering for us. And it felt good. Like when you win and you know you you're doing your little lap and you know the KC crowd cheering for you, the color bar cheer crowd cheering for you, and the Jake um, I mean Jago, because we you know, all of the schools cheering for you. And it just felt good. I mean it just felt good. It's like, whoa, wow, this is nice. What how come we didn't have this before? Because usually we, Usually, champs was just my sister climbing on the fence, cheering for me. <laughs> empty stadium. I've been there a few times. And yeah, my sister empty, was. Yeah. Everybody knew my sister because she was just loud. My sister Angie was at every champs, and she was just loud, and um, and and everybody kept wondering who is this Yannick? She yelling out, "Go Yannick!" and and but that's my nickname from Saint Mary. So my sister was just, my sister was like the very tech cheerleader. And she did an amazing job until we merged. And she was still there doing her thing. Yeah, the merger, I think the merger has done a whole lot. The, the energy is really different. And having the girls and the boys competing on the same day, as you said, Aileen, people can cheer for their friends. So if you, you're a girl competing, you can cheer for your male friends, whether they go to Calabar or or even your teammates from... from, from um, very yeah. technical. Yeah. But um, Jamaica's dominance in track and field is unmatched, especially now with, oh, in this century, the 21st century, Jamaica male and female has pushed the bar so high. It is ridiculous what you guys have done in the 21st century. And who has chance help your development, Aileen? Um, choosing a career in track and field. I mean, it's just the. I think it's just the vibe that you get. It's it's just the vibe that you get, like the pride that you get. Like when you are representing your high school, it's the pride that you get. And then when you come home and you make your you you come trials and everybody's just so um because 
back in the day, trials used to be the thing, you know, it had like stand, everybody would stand was nice and everything. And to have that mm -hmm. support and then literally just to like walk out and people know who you are. Like um, my, like growing up, my brother is a musician. I love Bunty Killer. And the first time I love Bunty Killer and Beanie Man. And the first time I met them, they knew who I was. You know how special that made me feel? Like they knew who I was. <laughs> And not because I was his sister, but they knew I was Aileen Bailey. And, who, from and who is your brother? Yeah, apart and from Capitan, they knew who I was. And I was like, what? Okay, this feels good. You know, maybe I need to, um, you know, run on a, a bigger stage, you know, to see how much, how, um, how much more, uh, no, no, celebrity -ness I can get. Um, and just, it's just the pride of representing. I think it was just more pride. For representing my country because when when you make a when i used to make junior team and the vibe you get when you win and when you come back home and it's just the love and support everybody has for you and then the fact that you had you went back then when you make a national jamaica team the gear was like a, a, a like diamond you know so you were the only one that had it and and you, you, know, you would never see anybody in it like like now you see everybody in like the jamaican gear but you have to have these make a team or have like a cousin or a sister that make the team too. So it's just like um, the things that you receive from representing your country just give you that pride and that love. And Champs for me prepared me to be able to compete on the highest stage because the level of competition we got competing with each other, it just, it just make everything else seems easy. Celine, Celine, Celine from St. Mary. Celine, how do you feel about buying of athletes or recruiting? How do you feel about uh, recruiting? Do you think that recruiting athletes, one coach said to me that um, a certain part of the country prepares athletes to move on to other area. How do you feel about that? I'd say I have mixed feelings as it relates to the buying of athletes because during my time at St. Mary High, we lost a lot of athletes because of that. And what I realized is that a lot of these athletes who are at these schools, the schools, the central schools, I realize that many of them are from the East, if we're being honest. And it really says a lot. But at the same time, if it is that an athlete is in the, an athlete is, let's say they're at a school, I don't want to say maybe on let's say on the resource then and you see that this athlete has potential and there's a chance that if you take that athlete from that school and place him in a more developed school per se there's a chance that you can get that athlete out there then that's a good thing right but there are times when but to that to some coaches at least it would be like they built that athlete and then you would just come on board and take that athlete from them. And so it can be seen as unfair because that school, that that school basically lost an athlete, right? That could have contributed to them getting points somewhere along the line. But as for me, I would say it was something I feared when I was going to St. Mary High. Not that I was the best of the best, but I always wondered, what if someone came to me with an offer like that? What would I do? Because at the same time, the decision wouldn't rest with me alone my parents would have a say in it as well. And I believe that for me, I always said that I liked where I was. And I think that I contributed to the foundation that was there and they contributed to my growth as well. So I felt like I, I owed that to them to actually stay there and work with the program and see if with my potential, if I could consume the training that I was getting and created not only a name for myself, but for my school as well to attract athletes and to get athletes that are already there to stay there well said aileen how do you feel about recruiting in, in 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 schools especially the bigger schools as we call them moving athletes from the non-traditional high schools i mean sometimes it i think um it, it's like it ha it's like it's 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 like it has its good part and then it's um sometimes it has its negative part because a lot of time um the traditional schools literally um universities know who they are and it's easy for that student if they want to move get a scholarship or something like that then it's um 
it's it's easier and it's more um it's easier for them to be able to do that and a lot of times like the the um the traditional school they have like the the funding to be able to help that kid because sometimes they you have to do the sats you have cxcs and a lot of times it's like fun small schools aren't financially what's the word aren't financially able to assist that athlete with that to, with 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 that process or they don't know the change that need or, or of commands that need to be done to be able to help that athlete get to like school so a lot of times kids switch to schools just for the academic aspect and be able to get a scholarship a lot of time it's literally not anything to do with just athletics because a lot of time they go into these power big schools and they get lost right and a lot of times like if you a lot of times like some school they can do without like recruiting because you already have 10 men running 10 so why are you going to take the little man from him school i would i would suggest that okay you see his potential you know work with his coach um if he wants to be able to go to college you you have the the, the avenues and all that stuff to be able to assist them assist them but don't take them out of the situation and then they come to you, your school and they're just making up numbers. It, a lot of time it's, it works out well, a lot of time it does. So it's like there's pros and cons to it. So you just have to, and parents literally have to like start paying attention what is best for my child. And you have to pay attention if your child is struggling in a situation, take them out of it. Um, a lot, don't let the flashy, they send the flashy that distract you from your child's potential or or, or them not being able to progress to where it is that they need to be because mentally that will mess mentally that mess up and mess mess up athletes bad and so it's just it's just you have to weigh your options and make sure it's the right decision for you as the athlete and the parents need to make sure it's the right decision for their child like me it was it was the right decision for me because I just it was a type and bear had and I was like that good to go to Vera and just take over, but what not everybody is like Vera? in that, that. What pulled you to Vera? What was the ticket that bought you for Vera? I mean, they tell me I was that I, I was sold that I would I was told that I would have access to the same dorm and bed that the Merlin Otti had access to, and I wanted all of that. Cause I wanted to be just like her or even better. So I wanted all of that. I, well, I mean, it worked out. <laughs> so you were sold once Merlin Otti's name was mentioned, you were, it was a gone. Gone, sold. It was yeah. done. Like I literally was ready. I, Manchester High School was the school I was going to. I was literally ready, set, ready to go to Manchester and very visited last minute. And they sold me on the Merlin Otti thing. And I was like, I am so sorry. What a story. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I like stories like those because at least you were sold on the notion that someone before you had done it and she is even doing better for Jamaica. But um, Celine, Girls Champs, what what has girls champs meant to you competing there whether you competed two or three times what was it like for you what did what does that memory um mean to you uh those are memories i think i'll hold for a lifetime it was mixed emotions all the way there were it's like you've been training all season and this is where you come. This is the big stage. So you know that here you deliver. And running running alongside named athletes, th that was something good for me. I realized that sometimes you just have to overcome that fear. It's natural. I realized that it's even natural to feel nervous. Nothing is wrong with that. Because <laughs> even the biggest of the biggest athletes. Do oh, yes. yes. So nothing is wrong with that. And at the same time, I learned that it is okay to lose, you know, it is okay to lose. But you know what makes what makes it good when you've lost, but you run a PB. That is one of the greatest feelings ever because coach can't blame me. And I did my best. Mm -hmm. I did yes. my best. And even, and even if you didn't make it to the finals, you feel so accomplished. I love those memories because 
they, even though I can't say, oh, I was on the podium, I can say I was there. I can say I experienced it. And I can say it has taught me a lot. Aileen, you have competed at Champs. You've competed at Carifta. You've competed at World Junior, CAC Games, the Olympic, the World, everything. Which one would you say is one of your most memorable? Oh, God. Um, ooh. I think boys and girls champs, and I guess why because... everybody always <laughs> say boys and girls champ. We're talking because... about Olympics. You've been to so many Olympics. How can boys champ supersede that? See, the thing is because the friendship that I created out of that, like Elva and ha Elva, I have Elva. I've had Elva in, even though she went to a different school. Like I've had her for like twenty odd years. Um, my best friend, Soini, I've had her for 20, 20 odd years. Um, oh, God. So many, so many people, like, I met from, like, through competing at Champs and so many good, rela like, related friendships. And this, it's like the support that you, the support system that I created from Boys and Girls Champs, like, came, went with me straight to professional because most of those people, like, um have like i've competed with on the professional stage and it's just the memory man it's you don't understand like it's the it's like you know how you you have your favorite song and when you play it it gives you like this this amazing feeling that's what yeah. boys and girls i think i don't know for me i don't know if it's for everybody but that's what boys and girls chance is for me it's like that favorite like your favorite song um and 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 it just it just it just brings you when you hear it you get all happy and warm and bubbly inside and it's just um it's just rep boys and girls just, is just a representation of Jamaica culture like literally you know literally the end of this week all the schools and all the athletes you will think that we hate each other and then one week later guess where we're going and all of us hugging up Carista. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like we have that this love. It's not I can't say love hate. It's like we have this love love relationship for each other when we're at boys and girls champs. And then we have this it's the same thing. So people literally think all of us like these boys and girls that are competing against each other like we hate each other but we don't. Like right after the race like we we, we literally walk to the back of the field and say yo even them I try to kill you, and me, I, what, what, your virgin, why them I try to kill you, can you beat me, <laughs> that situation, so it's just those relationships, and the fun experience, like, man, boys and children, I mean, 2004 Olympic gold medal, next level, but still, you know, boys and girls, foundation, foundation is the best thing ever, I've heard it a lot, I've spoken to a lot of people, and when I ask them, they're like, champs is bigger than anything else is it is it because we're at home in jamaica is it the noise that we as the fans in the stadium making is it the the vuvuzela what is it really that you guys it's love, it's, love. Definitely. Wow. it's literally love it is it is amazing i've been to quite a few champs myself and the energy i tell people i when i'm going to champs especially on a saturday I make sure to get there before anything starts because I don't want to miss, miss. anything. Yeah. I want to get, in, get my seat and start tallying my points and enjoying what you guys are doing. Champs, Girls Champs is, as I said earlier, is celebrating 66 years. I think they celebrated 66 last year. And um, there were four cancellations from it started in 1957 what what can we expect from girls champs this year 2023 as you ladies look on what do you think we can expect from the carnival itself excitement excitement can done honestly that is champs for you you can be sitting in the stands and let's say you used to run, it's like you, you feel as though you want to be out there on that field running just because of the excitement. It is just, the mood is everything for me. 
Yeah, it's the, yeah, it's the move, the vibe. It's the love, man. It's the love. Like, literally, they people will think that the KC and the Calabar people, them hate them one another. They, they don't. They, do. they don't. They're, they don't. They're like, home, they're like they're, it's just champs. But it, it's like think, a love, love relationship. Do you it's think just that I represented my school today. Do you think we, the fans, put up you guys against each other? Yeah. Yes. We, we, we're not hagglers. <laughs> Yeah, have time <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think we as a fan sometimes create tension between <laughs> our athletes and we think that the athletes, they don't like each other and True. we take side and then we say stuff to, to start an argument. And, you know, how do you feel about that, Aileen, competing on the world stage for Jamaica on the Jamaican team? And, you know, the I mean, it hurts. It's hurt, like, I I can take it if it's coming. It doesn't hurt my feelings if it's coming from like people in the US and Europe and them stuff. But it's the people that I love. I You're love cool. my country. I love Jamaica. Um, I I I I love Jamaica, and it it's when it hurts when it's coming from the people that you love because they expect us to be this the the same thing over and over like we go through changes we go through series we have injuries we have emotional like problems going on we have death we some a lot of time we're competing and we have like death in our family like 2012 olympics 2012 olympic trial that came to jamaica and, and i had to compete and like my bonus mom her son like she lost her son that year and she literally told me i need to go run instead of going to his his um his his funeral and i'm like dude i what <laughs> what so uh, so it's like different different sacrifices that we we make i mean we don't it's not like we're telling y'all to feel sorry for us or anything like that it's just, just that we would be, yeah just don't tear us down and it's like okay. I'm I'm okay with losing. I'm okay with constructive criticism. I'm okay with, but I don't like I don't like when some stranger come come on and like, oh, you fat, you're done, you need to retire. Um, it hurts, especially coming from the people that the country that you're representing and the people that you love unconditionally, because people have options. Like you, you there's like a bunch of Jamaicans that's running for different countries. We chose home because we love our home that's 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 our that's who raised us like boys and girls champs we were born and bred from boys and girls champs and it's a country that raised us and we want to represent and we want to feel the love even on our bad days even on our worst days and i'm like i i i i, I look at it as me coming to a bank uh, coming into the bank and telling uh, uh, um, the bank manager well you, you lose money today. You're useless. Go lose. Go, lo, get, leave your job, or I come in. I, I come into the bank and I tell you how to do your job. So Men's them not knowing, like, like understand that you know us as athletes, we go through, we go through things, we go through changes, we go through the same emotional roller coaster as you do. Um, it's just that just support us on. Or um or good days and our bad days because we're not gonna always have good days. Good days. I remember when you said in two thousand four Olympics what they did to him and then all, at when he start when he became lightning bolt everyone oh my god we knew he would have been no y'all were tearing him down stop it like literally so, the, people don't realize like the words that you speak into people like literally can cause damage but I guess you know. It is what it is, you know. Right. But, yeah, you know. you're right because I've had these these discussion every day with people, and I'm always I'm one of those persons who defend the athletes, and you know I've always said to people, let us not be too harsh with our comments because an athlete, if an athlete go out there and underperform, we don't know the emotional. Um, what what they're going through emotionals emotionally so let us be kind with our words and support i remember i was watching an interview with um melaine walker um last year and i remember she was saying 
she went somewhere to compete and she just wanted somebody to tell her that it would be okay. You know, she was in a race with Dion Hemmings and at that time, Dion Hemmings was at the peak of her career and Melaine was just coming. And she said she saw Dion Hemmings in the race and she was like, oh my God, my idol is in the same race with me. And she was saying to herself, please let her come over and just give me a pat on the shoulder and say, you got this. You know, so people do go through different emotions and mental health. We don't talk about mental health. How important is mental health for athletes? Celine, you want to jump on that one first? I'd say it is very important, but it can be something that we tend to overlook, especially given the fact that it's athletic. So you're just thinking, okay, he or she's going to just come, run, perform. But what if they don't perform up to your standard, as Aileen was saying, or what is expected of them? Then you tearing them down can, of course, affect their mental health. And then we have to think about athletes who are in school as well. Not everyone can manage time. Time management is not a thing for everybody. And that, too, can actually tear down an athlete. Again, you can have things, even though you're an athlete, you're a student, you have a social life as well. Things are happening there as well. So I think that is something that I think we should give it more focus in the athletic department because to be honest not much people consider it i must say especially if you're an athlete who keeps on performing at the level that which you're expected oh then everything is fine with this athlete or something like that she can manage it he or she's an athlete if somebody says something about bad about them they won't feel anyway because they're used to it but no before we're anything we're first humans so that is something we should really focus on Aileen, how did you stay focused mentally throughout your career? I had a therapist. I had my best friend. I had my pops. I had my siblings. <laughs> support, support, a good support. I just, I had a system. Um, and then, um, and then my my um, my manager, Mr. Spencer, he like he instilled like one specific phrase in my brain from day one and he was like be humble in victory and gracious in defeat and that like kept me and that like kept me going and it doesn't matter how bad I do um he is always proud and he's always had a, a good word of encouragement my um my best friend um Saini she's always done that um there's like so much and Auntie Carmen Auntie Carmen was like gangster she said don't follow them because she will she will tase anybody for me. <laughs> so I had and she had this strong confidence, you know, nothing bothers her. So all these people like instill like just give, gave me like pieces of them to be able to like whenever I feel down, I just grab from different people, whoever I need at the time. So if I need an anti Carmen type of level, I, I grab I reach for her and then Saini and then my Mr. Spencer. So it's just different, different people I had. And then um Dr. Irons, I used to um see him when I was called living in Jamaica and compete. So, you know, I had a therapist. Yeah, yeah. that's why we never take out a couple of people at the stadium when they said the wrong thing to me. Oh wow. Girl, I do I do understand because just going back to that a little bit, I'm not going to call any name, but I a young a certain athlete this season is underperforming and some of the comments that I've been hearing I'm if you tell anyone I'll fight them. My heart goes out to her. I've never met her. My heart goes out to her because I am saying to myself, we need to support our athletes. We have no idea what she's going through, why she is underperforming. And I'm sure People on the live might know who I am talking because it's transitioning from she, one program. Yeah, she is underperforming and she has not done much this season. And people are just trashing her. And I'm like, come on, she is not even a class two athlete as yet. Give her a break. You know, so like for her, I mean, how 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 is she going to cope? What kind of system can get her back in the game to be ready? for less than two weeks because chance is less than two weeks mm -hmm. week after next this time we're in um day two of champs yeah and it's just sure. her her circle right her and circle I'm of people has to be 
that um, strength for her and that encouragement and that motivation. And they literally need to keep her away from the negative comments and don't tell her what anybody say. Um, keep her away from that. Keep her focused on what it is that she has to do and she has to accomplish and just, just zone her in on, on all, you know, pour, pour in all the positive things that is, is available. Know. People are just ridiculous. I mean, people are saying all kind of things. They don't know if she's, she's injured. They don't know if she's going through something. All we can do is find something negative to say because they're used to her um, doing super things and all of that. And I'm saying, come on, we don't know. Maybe, maybe she's injured and we're not told. So do not form an opinion. But as you know, there's a thing called puberty that us females go through, right? Do, do, do they know that there's a thing that called puberty that females go through at a specific age and it literally makes your body do even if you're telling your body that it has to do this it doesn't until it goes through that process we need to be a little bit more positive when we're talking about people especially if we don't know them if you don't know what the story is try and have something a little nicer or a little kinder to say another question another big question do you guys think that coaches at the high school level have a responsibility to take athletes future into consideration <laughs> most definitely most definitely and i was i even wanted to chirp in when aileen was speaking regarding who she had as her therapist i think that coaches sometimes they serve as that that stronghold for their athletes because my coach he was he was a cool type of coach you know when it's work time it's work time yes but he made he made us feel so comfortable where we could talk to him about anything even if it's a case where if you were underperforming something we're going through at home anything at all and he was like that safe space that we could go to and we could talk to him right sometimes he would even pick up because he'd see that we're not performing as how we used to which you're training every day there has to be some connection or some relationship between you and your coach your coach knows you like that because you spend most of your time training so it's like he would pick up and you know my, call us one side what's happening with you you wish to talk about it and we could just literally talk to him about anything so yes i believe coaches do have that responsibility it's like once we've we start performing for the school representing the school so it's like our future now is when we reach that level you and I, my coach and I, suppose you can have that discussion, sir. How do I look for the future? Where do you think I can go from here? Are there any offers for me? And he should, I think that he or she should put themselves out there to actually search for schools, um, scholarships, you know, to help those, to help these athletes. Because not only will it help the athletes, you know, it will help those upcoming. And not only that, but then the athlete will feel like, no man, I remember, sir, help me through all of this. Then I need to give back to my school, see who I can help in return because what? Someone helped me. Yeah. So, yeah. And it will, it will, I think it will help their legacy also because Mr. Michael Carr from Woolmer's Girls, um, Shellyan is a part of his legacy. And when they talk about Shellyan Fraser Price, they talk about Michael Carr a whole lot so you know i know that a lot of the coaches they're thinking about championship and points and um, i don't know if it's a case where because they're not going to be coaching the athletes after they leave high school but i i personally think that coaches should really look especially if it is a talent that you know can go somewhere else you right. should at least put think some long term, term. Yeah, think long term because mm -hmm. I've heard a, a few people said that they want to go to Arkansas University and I asked them why and they said because Arkansas um, look at the Olympics, they want the Olympians, they want their athletes to go to the Olympics. So it is not just about running on the NCAA circuit, they actually want. And I remember the 2012 Olympics, they had quite a few of their athletes who were at the Olympics and they did pictures. Tyson Gay was one of them. Veronica was one of them. I think Omar McLeod also went to, to Arkansas. Arkansas, yeah. Right, so they actually look 
higher than the NCAA circuit. They're looking at how many Olympians they can produce. But um, just moving along a little bit, let us talk about champs 2023 on the ground. Girls champs, who will win girls champs? Why, um, Haida look good. That's true, <laughs> true. And then, um, oh God, who else did I see? I think Homewood look like they're coming into a little yeah, they're, form. Homewood, Homewood is coming back. Edwin Allen yeah. is there, of course. But so it's, yeah. it's, 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 I guess Saturday we'll, we'll figure it out when it starts because it's, it looks, it looks sticky. Yeah, it looks like it is going to be very close. But I want us to talk about the class one girls, 100 meters <laughs> with Serena Cole Ooh. versus Alana Reed. Um, two outstanding young ladies they went to the world juniors last year both of them medal and they are back this season on and they're doing brilliantly brilliantly not forgetting alexis um james from petersfield and alexis stayed at petersfield right through her career and to me she has improved she has improved so nicely that she too will be in the mix um can we can we say veronica's um record will go off what 11.12 11.13 over 20 years depends on how it is because serena long jumps as well right mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. she does. so jumping and then running kind of rough on the legs so if there's a way for the long jump not to be on the same true because she ran 11, she, she ran 11.18 on on sunday on saturday to win yeah with fresh legs so if she has yeah. that and that's the thing because she's going to be running all week because i know she have relays and she have the jumps so and the jumps like Elva can tell you because she used to run from the long jump to the hundred final. Yes, I've the seen jump, it. I've seen quite a few people. I've the seen jumps it. and the legs. Yeah, yeah. I've, so, I've seen Young Hodges, by the way, who is now the world junior champion at two hundred indoors. Yep, twenty-two point three three sixteen at eight. next week. Yeah, yeah. It's 16 running 22.33. But I've seen Hodges. She did it last year at the Carifta Games held in Kingston where she was actually in the long jump pit when they were ready to run. I think it was 200 semis or something like that. And she just moved from the pit, go and run her race, won her, her heat, and then go back to the long jump pit. So it it is doable. We've seen athletes who have done it. But um, that 100 meter with Serena Cole and Alana, it is going to be one of the highlights on, on the girls' side. Yes, on the girls' side. Because yeah. they're both looking good, and it seems as if a great rivalry is, is going on, is going on there. Because at Central Champs, Alana won. At Carifta, Serena won. So and Champs... And the both of them will be going to Carifta if Alana oh, chooses to run the one. So it it they are something it's, is going on there. But we know that champs, as Aileen said, champs energy is a different energy. So when you different. line up, it can it can go it can go anywhere. And then Serena is trying to create her own path because, like, for the couple of years, it, she was overshadowed by the twins. By the twins so yeah. so Do this year she wants them. Do you, think sure she was, do you think she was overshadowed though? Because she broke up the twins. She I mean, it's not. I mean, not 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 overshadowed in a bad sense. Um, not in a like like not in a, not in a bad sense, but like I think like the focus was on them and not even though she was doing well. Like the focus was literally mm -hmm. on them. Like she was just like the bridesmaid. And that she was definitely yeah. her year though. Yeah. And yeah. as, some, as Kino on the live chat is saying, if the wind works in their favor, then they can get good times. If the wind is legal, which yeah. is, you know, positive 2.0 is fine. If the wind isn't, because I remember last year, 
last year after the class two boys ran, the wind was perfect, I would say. And by the time the class one young ladies line up, the wind changed. And I'm like, oh my God. Stay them for you. Right, because that race between Tina Tia, Tina Tia and Brianna Liston, it should have been it should have been faster based on what they have been yeah. doing coming in, but the wind change. So it depends on the time of day in the stadium. It could either be in your back or in your face. So if the wind is so they have to the time it. Yeah. So that is one of the races that we will be looking to see. But as you guys said, and I agree, it is. I think it is going to be close between um, Heidel and Edwin Allen. And um, Homewood should be not too far away. So, and Homewood is a ten-time champion. So I never, I never bet against a champion. I prefer to bet mm -hmm. on them and lose. So, any other event you guys are looking forward to for? At Girls Champs 2023? Class the 400. Two. The 400 class. Class one. With, yeah. Oh, um, with, with Ricky Onika. and... Uh, yes. Ricky and, Ricky and Russell and Onika Makanoff. Yes. If Makanoff run that 400 meters, yes, it is going to be... It is going to be a ding-dong battle. But uh, Ricky is... Ricky and is looking... To me, and this is my opinion, some people might disagree, but even though they both have run sub-52, Rikian is looking the strongest for me because Makanoff will have the 400 hurdles is her pet event. So if she run in the 400 meter to get extra points, Rikian is looking, um, looking very, very, very superior in that class one girls, 400 um meters so that you're right that that will be another race to watch and of course the class three girls 100 meters with the duo from Woolmers, oh, with lady. yes with natrice east and tiana marshall that is going to be kino on the live is saying russell cannot beat um arrested makanoff but <laughs> You know, we have to remember that Makanov is doing the four hurdles and the 400 flat. So, it's and, time before. yeah, and Ricky Ann will be doing the 400. So, if I was going to bet, because I like Makanov, I like her, I've been watching her all her chance career, a lovely young lady. But um, if I was going to bet, I would put the money on. Rikian. And I would love to see Rikian versus Makanov if Makanov is only running that 400 meter because that would be, they would be running big woman time. But it depends on the schedule though. If the schedule yeah. is right, she mm -hmm. can run the four hurdles and come back. Because like I said, champs energy is next level. Dead leg, nobody dies at champs once the vibe is right yeah the vibe, it's, the it's energy, like everybody's yeah. going to be fighting to the line so if she gets enough rest between the hurdles and the 400 it's going to yeah. be good yeah it is going to be a very good race i i assure you it is going to be a very a very very good race so if you know if if she's running one event and makanov is running two it it might be a little work on on makanov's legs but let's see this is what i want to see the competition the excitement and all of those things. But the class three girls, Wolmas, Wolmas have a pair of young ladies, Tiana Marshall and Natrice East versus Terry Long from Edwin Allen. If she, if Terry Long is fully fit, then we should be seeing a ding dong battle. Wolmas versus um edwin Allen. Yeah. yeah not not every day you see a kingston school challenging like this challenging central i like it yeah i love Women it you usually yeah. have some yeah. good athletes yeah i love it I, I i love it yeah. I, I, yeah I i love the energy i love what i'm seeing and it is going to be fireworks. It is going to be fireworks. Sadly, I won't be there, but of course, I will be watching. We'll be watching it. Yes, we will be watching Alien. I'm at it. 
yeah, we will be watching from this side. So um, anything else you guys are looking out for from Girls Chunks? Because I have a little quiz for you. <laughs> but before I get to my quiz, any other Girls Chunks points you want to, to bring to the fore for our viewers, our listeners? Kino yeah. is saying that Natrice East have top end speed. Yeah, she's very good. Very oh, good. Cool. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's very good. She doesn't have the best start, but her top end is super. So she's kind of like Sharika. Yes, and Karen. Yeah, kind of okay. like Sharika and Karen. You can leave them in the blocks. And, so they are. and even Veronica too, because if we remember Veronica 2007 at the World Championships, Veronica was left in the blocks and Veronica came back and won the gold medal. It took them a good few minutes to separate Veronica oh, and Lauren. Yes. Yeah. So you have some athletes, not the best starters, but men. Yeah, well. yep. And you say Bolt is like that too. He doesn't have the best start, but hello, he and is coming. Well. Yeah, so she's very good. So if we don't have any more girls' chance, uh moments or any other event that you guys are looking forward to, we are going to get into this quiz now. Ready? Are we ready? Are we ready, ladies? I hate exams. I know, Same. right? So what I'm going to do, I am going to call, or right, let me write Aileen, Celine. I am going to call the name of the athletes and you tell me which school they went to. I did this with the men. I'm going to talk. No, I did this with the men on Monday. And Davian Clark won the male section and the female section. Yes, Davian Clark. So when I did when I did it on Monday, Monday, um, I was only doing the male, and then the men said, "Do some female, do some female." So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give you guys some females and and also their male. Ellie, please to take time with Celine. Don't. Celine, just, <laughs> Celine just born yesterday. Anyway, we're going to go now. All right, Jackie Pusey. Saint Mary High. Okay, one for Celine. Uh, Grace Jackson, Queen. Queen. <laughs> All right, that sounds like the both of you at the same time. So I'll give you one one there. <laughs> Karen Stewart, Jago, oh. Jago, yeah. Say so Jago, she went to Melane Walker, Jago. You know, you're missing the time with silly. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Delarine Ennis, London. San Diego. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw what just happened there. Nothing uh, happened. What are you talking about? <laughs> Michelle Freeman. Diego. All right, Celine. All right. <laughs> Juliet, Juliet Campbell. Juliet Campbell. Juliet Campbell. Juliet Campbell is now Puma's rep for Jamaica. She's always at track meets. San Diego. Yes, San Diego, right. <laughs> Ali, Alien, easy up, man. Huh? San, Sandy Richards. Mm. Clarendon College. Clarendon College it is. Gillian <laughs> Russell. I know this might give um, Celine a little problem. Gillian Russell. Gillian Russell was in the era with, um, she competed with the likes of Merlin Otti. Uh, no. Walmers. No, Kingston. It's a Kingston school. Jilly, how are Jilly go? Hope Road. Mm -hmm. That's one hint. Somewhere up Hope Road. Ah, oh, then no. no Campion. Champion is right. Champion. Yeah, Champion. She went to Sharon Simpson. Manchester. Manchester. Ma Manchester. Yeah. Elaine Thompson Hira. Manchester. No. no. Yes, you're right, Manchester. Manchester, Manchester. Yeah. yeah, Manchester, yeah. <laughs> Sharika Williams. Diego. Stets. Stets, yeah. Bridget Foster Hilton. How much can you go again? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Int, int. No, Stets. Stets? Yeah, Stets, yeah. Shelly and Fraser Price. I not know. Mm, better. You better know that one, yeah, I know. Look here, Shelly, I'm going to say it again. Shelly and 
praise a prize five times world. Is it not no, 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 it's Trish. Oh, what is the name? Hero no, no, Circle. No, no. Hero Circle. What is it? No, I hope she'll get to see this. I'm no, going to shake her head. <laughs> Walmart it is, yeah. Shelly went to Walmart. Ah, uh, lovely in Williams Mills. How can I not notice that my yeah. best friend went to that school first? No, not fair. Lovely didn't go. To no, school. it's in Saint Anne. Mm -hmm. um, Fern Marlene, Court. Fern <laughs> Merlin Otti. There. There. Aileen Bailey. Yeah. There. <laughs> I went to Calabar. <laughs> Sharika Jackson. There. <laughs> and Celine. Veronica Campbell Brown. Did you mention this? You yeah, just said. Celine. Yeah. There, there, yes. Aileen told the story. There. Yes, Aileen told the story, right? <laughs> Dion Hemmings, my catty. Oh. She's not going to get that one there. Mm -hmm. Dion Hemmings. No. Yeah. On that side, you're warm. There. There. Yeah. Oh, Aileen did say there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lacina Golden Clark. Aileen did. Aileen, there. Yeah, Aileen did mention her. There is right. Beverly McDonald. Come, Celine. Aileen. There again? Yes. You see, I tell you, I tell you, Veer, Veer and St. Jago, Veer and St. Jago are most of Jamaica's outstanding track and field athletes. Because all of all the names I just called, they're all Veer. The last set Yeah, because back then, Veer Tech and St. Jago was like, Veer Tech, St. Jago, and Manchester High School were like, mm -hmm. they always a war. Yeah, because if you look at our medalist at the Olympics and the World Championships, most of them come from Veer yeah. Technical. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you a little secret about Veer. Veer Technical has had a female on every four by one team at the Olympics from 1980. If you don't believe me, go and check it. If I am wrong, yes. Merlin Otti was there from 1980, 84, 88, 92, 96, Sydney. Then and then Beverly. Yeah, and in 2004 came Aileen, Beverly, Veronica, 2008, Aileen, Veronica, 2012, Veronica again, 2016, Veronica was there, 2020, Sharika was there. So you see, I'm not lying. Very technical yeah. had a female on every four by one team from 1980 Olympics. So who was one more? Jake or Veer? Hmm? There. One more there. There one more there, medal. I think there. Yeah, I think overall there. There has one more titles than Jago. I can do a check, but um, just working with quick calculations. When you look at mm -hmm. how many Merlin won, how many Veronica Merlin won. alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to go to the men now. This is a part. Oh God, I'm a fail. Give you guys trouble. The men now. Raymond Stewart. Campadown. Campadown is right. Donald Quarry. Donald Quarry. Donald Quarry. As in the Olympian Donald Quarry. Green School. The are from Mountain View. Um, School of Mountain View. Kingston, Excelsior. same way. No. Cases? No. no. Kingston School, but no. Mm. St. Diego. Not St. No. Diego. No. Not no. Arden, <laughs> no, not Arden. Calabar? No, no, not Calabar. No, Why did I thought he went to Campadon? No, Campadon. Donald Quarry oh. and Raymond Stewart went to Campadon. Oh, Campadon. Okay. Yeah. Davy and Clark. Purple. Davy and Clark. Purple. Casey. Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Lennox Miller. This one might give you guys a little trouble because he won medals for Jamaica, the 1968 and 1972 Olympics. He Lennox Miller. Down. Yeah, no. Kingston. Is that too, no, Kingston. Kingston? Mm -hmm. mm. No, Sean. Lennox Miller. Miller, Miller. Um, yeah, 
Lennox Miller, I think, if my memory serves me correctly, I think he's the father of Inga Miller. You've ever heard of Aileen? You're supposed to know the name. Yeah, I know Inga. Yeah, yeah. she runs the he, US. I think he's her dad. He went to KC. KC? Yeah. So I'm going to give the both of you a point for that. Gregory Horton. Gregory. St. Diego? No, country school. Kingston. No, Gregory at Kingston. Okay, yes, Don. Mm hmm Hint. No Kino, not 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 Calabar. No yes, Carrier, yes. not Walmers, no. Je Gregory got Excelsior. Excelsior is right, yeah. Winthrop Graham. Excelsior? <laughs> Winthrop Graham, no, country. Oh, Winthrop went to um hmm. Stets. Stets. Stets is right, no, Stets. You same boat. You better know that you're a little girl. <laughs> oh. You said both. She got William it. Neve. Oh, she said William <laughs> Neve because I would be most upset. <laughs> Danny McFarlane. Is that country school? Yeah, country school. Oh, Ochi. Yeah, Ochi. No, Ochi is <laughs> high. Oh. A, a Safa Powell. What? Um, St. Jago. No. no. His brother went to St. Diego. Hmm. It's in so Spanish Town. Um, why am I drawing a blank? Silly, silly, Kina. I so know, I know. Why you why you know. know. Edwin Allen. Yeah. <laughs> Who, where are we is now? They, Asafa? It, Asafa. It, they are, uh, Asafa. 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 They are, um, where place name? It's in St. Catherine. It's in St. Yeah, Catherine. No, no. St. Catherine. Well, no, not St. Diego. No, no not no, St. Diego. No. no. It is it is out of Spanish town. Out of Spanish town. See Omar telling you guys there. So it's Spanish town then. Hmm? Charlie Mount. Really? Charlie Mount. Celine said Charlie Mount first or Aileen? Yeah. Oh, Celine. Celine. Oh. Yeah, Asafa went to Charlie Mount. All right, moving down the line now. Michael Freta. St. Diego. No. Michael's, Michael Freta is actually from Trelawney, but he went to school in Kingston. He oh. went to Wilmerge. Yeah, Wilmerge is right. Yep. All right. Nesta Carter. You know the one now. St. Diego. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> country. <laughs> Not St. Diego. Country? country. A little bit more out in country. More like Widow. central cold. Jamaica. It's cold All up right. there. All right. I'll give you a hint. He and Elaine came, is from the same area. Manchester. Manchester. He's banana Grove. Banana. What name? Banana Grove? Yes, yeah, somebody. Yes, something like that. So, H.P. Miller, you're a young athlete in my time. Because, I know, right? She just has stress you out. No, guess what? No, no, guess what? No, the athletes that I'm actually looking at, the heading of it is champs athletes who went on to do. Um, who competed for the country at a high level and so you could have get yeah. one new one but, but what I, i'm going to do it when i'm finished with these i'm going to just throw some new one on the top of my head <laughs> no but better, there's ones that she, I think know she them. ones that she would know cisandra mm. cisandra is saying manchester there all right next one we're going to know michael mcdonald michael mcdonald there yes <laughs> Steve Mullins. There. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Johan Blake. Johan Blake, Jago. Yes, ma'am. Wow, you get a Jago. Nikhil Ashmir. Nikhil Ashmir, Ashmir, Ashmir. Yeah. Johan, best friend. Jago. Um, yeah. He and Johan run, run a chance together. Nathan oh. Allen. St. Jago. Yes, ma'am. Wow, you're firing. Bert Cameron. Yes. Bert Cameron is the first world champion at 400 meters. There. No. St. Jacob. St. Mm -hmm. Yep. Why Gregor, are there so many Jacob people? Gregory yeah. Med, Gregor Medgu. Who? Who? Gregory Medgu. Gregor He's Medgu. new. Gregory like Medgu. He competed back in the he competed back in the time of like Merlin. He was on team with Merlin, Juliet Cuthbert, Grace. How, 
See, I'm lost. Say Jago, say Jago. Say so, Jago. I give, so I'll give you both a point. Why didn't I say Jago? Donovan Powell. Mm. Donovan oh, Powell. Oh, that's brother. That's Alpha's brother, yeah. Oh, he. Casey. No. He went to school in St. Catherine. Um. Oh, my God. The people on the comment section, they, they all have yeah. the answer. They all have the answer. Donovan Powell, St. Catherine yeah, School, so. but, but not the oh, same school so as Asafa. Asafa went to Charlie Mount and he went to Jago? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. All right. Arthur Wind. I know this one going to give Celine, I'm going to give you guys trouble, but I'm still throwing them in because they have done so much. Arthur? Mm -hmm. Arthur Wind. Arthur? Is it Arthur? No. It's a country school? No. no. Is it St. George's? No. Jago? Uh, Calabar. Seabar. Calabar. Calabar. So, yeah. Herb McKinley. <laughs> Calabar, my name. Yeah, that's my favorite. Calabar. <laughs> Herb is Calabar. Warren Weir. <laughs> Walmart. No. Bar. Celine, Celine, you must know Warren. Where Warren go? Calabar. C yeah. Sicarian in the chat saying um, Calabar. Sandra Kino, all of them. Big up on herself. Maurice oh. Wignall. How oh, will you again? Maurice Wignall ran hurdles for Jamaica. He's a hurdler. Calabar? It's Sandra. Say. Yes. Yeah, yes, Calabar. Calabar. Oh. Go on, Sandra. You know where I go on. Yes, Ker Sandra. Kerry, where you get KC from? Kerry, look like she like KC. You know, these are the people on the chat. Frederick, oh, da Frederick Dakers. Yeah, you have people on the chat answering. Calabar. Dakers, I yes. think Dakers into Calabar. Yeah, Dakers is Calabar. Uh, Travis Smichael. Michael, my color bar. Yes. Mandy Boat, how are you doing well, man? Maurice Smith. Maurice Smith won silver at the World Championship 2005, I think it was. And he's an entertainer right now. St. James, Yes. Color bar, yes. Color bar, yeah. Color bar. All right, I'm going to do some new athletes now, just off the top of my head, to help out Celine. You see what I'm saying, Monroe? Omar go Monroe. Omar, <laughs> Omar is Calabar. Maurice went to Calabar. Maurice went to Calabar. All right, I'm going to throw some athletes, some younger athletes. Simone Facey. Simone Facey, St. Diego. No. There. There, yes, is right. Not, not young. This, she, she. Those not young, but those are 21st century. But then again, when these people compete in Celine, must say one. Oh, baby. Must say one, yeah. Young. All right, so all right, we're going to come a little forward. Anisha McClacken. McClacken. There. No, go on again. They won Edwin. 10. No, they won 10 championships. Go on again. One more guess. San Diego. No. San Diego only won four championships. Homewood. Homewood, yes. Anisha McClacken, Homewood. All right, let's come further now. Kevona Davis. Edwin. Yes. Kevona Davis is actually from St. Mary also. Yep. All right. Um, I'm going to give you a name now, but she is not Jamaican, but she ran a champs in Jamaica. And she's now doing well overseas at the college level. Um, Julian Alfred. Julian. She, she, went Santa? To, she went to school in St. Catherine. No. St. Catherine. Uh, St. Diego. No. St. Catherine. Hi. St. Catherine. Hi. She's no she's no creating problems on the, the um she was the college, here at school? circuit. Yeah, she went to St. Catherine mm -hmm. High. But what is okay. so funny, yeah, she ran along with Kevona Davis. She ran a chance with Kevona Davis. All right, That's who cool. else who else can I give Celine that is in the now? Um I did say Shelly no. already, and Celine could not tell me which school Shelly Ann went to Jacko. <laughs> I did say Sherika Jack Sherika Jackson. I think I said Sherika. Yeah, before, you said Sherika Veer. Veer, yeah, okay. Sherika is Veer. Um, Chrisani May. Do you know the name Chrisani May? Homewood. Homewood. Yeah, Homewood. She ran eight hundred for Homewood. Um, I, I'm just picking names. Brittany. Brittany Anderson. Brittany Anderson. Brittany. 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 Mm -hmm. 
I have to give you that. No, you're right. And I'm going yes, to tell she, you the she story. She transferred in the later years. Yeah, she went to Veer. She started out at Veer and then she finished up at Camperdown. So yeah, Camperdown yeah. and Veer can own Brittany Anderson. Um, you were there at that time, Aileen, when she was there? I'm an old lady. No, no. Brittany <laughs> actually came after, after a Aileen. She came um, like after Veronica. Yeah, she came after Veronica too, yeah. Uh, Brittany is just maybe 22, 23, something like that. Okay. Um, Megan Tapa. Yeah. Megan Tapa. St. Andrews for girls. Yep. Uh, Daniel Williams. Daniel World Williams. champion Daniel Williams. Um, Daniel, Kingston, Daniel. Kingston School. Kingston School. Yes, Kevin, you're right. Brittany is very young. Woolmans? No. Go on again, Kingston. Kingston, Kingston, Queens. Queens is right, yeah. <laughs> uh, Daniel went to Queens. Uh, let me let me see who else I can come with off the top of my head. I'm going to go to some males now. Christopher Taylor. Hello, bar. Mm hmm. Uh, Ramon McKenzie. Ramon McKenzie. Mm hmm. In Kingston? Yeah, Kingston too. But he was after he was before Christopher Taylor. Oh, Red is, uh, uh, stick to Red is Road. Calabar? Calabar, right. Um, Ramon McKenzie was actually in the same era with um, Warren Weir. He was on team with Warren Weir running against Johan. And yeah. Um, who else I can give you from your age group? Celine. Um, uh, who else? Mm -hmm. People in the chat, give me some schools now, some names. Sandra, give me some names. Um, uh, Anthony Carpenter. Anthony Carpenter. Calabar. Mm-hmm. Calabar. Brian Level. Um, Edwin. Edwin is right. DeAndre Daly. DeAndre Daly. Casey? Mm-hmm. Country. Way way to a country. Not alien side. Not the not the dominant side. The other side. West, West. Elizabeth. West. DeAndre Daly. Edwin the West. Seth? No. Herbert Morrison. Herbert Morrison. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And Krume, Bouwaji and Krume. Ah, uh, Casey. Yes, man. I know I know everybody would know. Would everybody. Know he is Bouwaji. so good. Listen, we're not here to talk about the boys, but My bad. He is, listen. Very. Listen. And Krume is he went to the World Juniors last year and won silver, and he is still on that high. I don't know. All most of the athletes who went to the World Juniors last year and did well, they are still on form. Most of them are still, based on yeah. what I've seen. Serena, Serena is still on form. Alana is on form. And Kuma is on form. Delano Kennedy is on form. Oh, Delano Kennedy. He runs a 400. Uh, Walmart? No, country, central. Country. Mm -hmm. Ooh, not Edwin. Yes, Edwin. Edwin. Edwin? Yeah. He won the Carifta last year and he went to the World Junior Championship. But unfortunately, Mind me he asking, got... where, where is Level now? Brian Level? He's still yeah. at Edwin Allen, but he is injured. Okay, okay. Yeah. He didn't run at the Carifta trials last weekend because he, I think he's slightly injured based on what I'm hearing. Or he's having some little issues. So I guess he's just resting, resting okay. for a chance. A chance. Um, Delano Williams. How did Delano go Kevin, 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 why are you going so far back? I, Delano, will, it's in the country. Yeah, country. Yeah. Delano. Um, West in the West. Petersfield. No, go, go on down some more. Go on some more. Monroe. Monroe is right. Zainel Hughes. Thank you, my people in the chat, giving me some school. Zainel Hughes. Oh. Zainel, like Casey. No. Yeah, Casey. Yeah. Casey. Yeah, yeah. He, he, but he, he has, British. He is from Angola, I think, or something like that. But he's now competing yes. for the British here yeah, for Great Britain. Like a Brit yeah. British. Um, I see another name, Tracy Barnes. Oh God, Omar, make it wicked. So Tracy Barnes. Tracy Barnes. Mm -hmm. Mannings. Yeah, yeah. I know Celine <laughs> would get that one. Yeah, Mannings. Mannings. She was an outstanding. Oh my God, when you I go to the what, what did she run? What did she? Eight hundred. 
Eight. When you go to stadium, I hear the name Tracy Barnes. Man, and you four. have to look. Yeah, four and eight. Oh my gosh, she was something else. Um, there was another name that I saw. Trisha K. Smith. I would school Trisha K. Smith go again. My name's. And my name's Trisha. Yes, my name's yeah, Trisha K. Yeah, my name. She went to my name's. Yeah. Um, who else I can think of? Come, guys, in the chat, give me some more. Um, Prince from St. Diego. What is Prince's first name again? Gregory. Gre oh, my. Awesome. Okay, so you got that one. You got that one. <laughs> you like St. Diego, right, Celine? <laughs> yes, I do. You do. Yeah, Gregory Prince rent too. Yeah. Let's go. Tina Clayton. Edwin, the great Edwin. <laughs> yes, Edwin indeed. Tia and Tina, Edwin Allen. Um, Brianna Liston. Well, she started at San Diego and ended at Idel. Look at you! Hey. <laughs> Two points for that one. Yes, you are right. She started out yes, at San Diego. And, transfers are fun. Yeah, and finish up at um, Idel. Um, Simoya Campbell. I know that name. Mm -hmm. No, how much to go? No, um, Veer, Veer, Samoya Campbell, Veer. Yeah, she she actually upset Chris Anime at um at champs in the eight hundred, beating Chris Anime on the line, running inside. Oh, oh yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, Sashika Steele. She oh, left wow, look at you in central business. Where is she? <laughs> Who? Um, Sashi, Sashi oh, so I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure she's still in the sport. Bobby Gay Wilkins. Bobby Gay? Yeah, very outstanding for a certain school in the in central. Bobby Gay. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. a female or a male? Female. Female, female, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah, you're right. Female. Edwin? No, but you're warm. You're very warm. Same place in that area. I, no. Central no. Jamaica. No. Heidel. Home no, mode. Home home home. Home. Yeah, home mode. Yeah, she was uh, standout. Jura Levy. Sandra, give me the name. Jura Levy. Jura Levy. You mm. guys are smiling. Why? Because Aileen, Aileen know exactly where she's from. <laughs> there. When, listen, when you talk about a starter, when you talk about a bullet starter, she's still competing to this day. When you talk yeah. about a bullet starter, you talk about Jura Levy. So Aileen can tell you where she went. Oh, she does say that. She, just she said, said there. Oh, she said, okay. She okay. saw me dancing, Regina. so she said there. Oh, she's going oh. to dance and her face is going to lighten up when she went. So I know it's there. Yes, <laughs> yes. Kalise Pensa. Kalise, I know where Kalise is talking. Oh, where Kalise go again? Kalise, oh, where? Oh, oh, from right the now. west. She's from the west also. Kalise is from Mastet, the west. Scali, Astet, Scali. Hey, what's that? Astet, Scali. Oh, Astet? No, Manins. Manins. Uh, Manins? I think a Manins should go. People on the live, where Kalise went? Manins, right? I think it's Manins. Yeah, I think it's Manins. Um, she went. No, it's one of those schools. Yeah, I think it's Manins. Ah, uh, Kemba Nelson. This one is going to be Kimba. Kimba is a town school. Hold on, Kevon is yeah, saying I that. I think it's a town school. Hold on, Kevon is saying that um, Kalise went to your castle. I'm I think he's my name. It is. Dion Hemmings started out at your castle. Yeah, she went your to your castle. Your castle familiar. Yeah, Dion Hemmings went to, started out at your castle and then she ended up at. at yeah, here. I think Kalise started went to York. Yeah, because oh, it wasn't like a big name school she went to. Okay, yeah, she went to Manning's. I know her from Manning's. Yeah, they're saying Manning's. Yeah, all right. Did I say Kemba? Yeah, Kemba Nelson. Kemba. Mm -hmm. School out here, no? One of those. Kem Kemba is from the West. Yes. Um. Yes, yes. Mount Avernia. There you, was this. You're close, there. but it's um Montego Bay High. She went to. Or is really? Mount Avernia? Yeah, it's Montego Bay High. Or is Mount Avernia? Oh. I think it's Mount Alvernia. It's Mount Alvernia, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Mount yeah. Alvernia. I went to Mount Alvernia, right, yeah, yeah. What are was that been of an Olympic medal? Yeah, and see, on the live, they're saying um, is... Hold on. Yes, they're saying Mount Alvernia. Yeah. yeah, my brother's wife teaches at that school. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, Kiara Grant. Kiara Grant, yeah. that's a good one. Kiara Grant, where did yeah. Kiara Grant went? Kiara Grant went to school in Kingston. That time they used to have some really good hurdlers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kingston Hurdle School. Yeah. You used, well, to hear their, you used to hear their name a lot in the hurdles. Right in Kingston. All right, let me give you a hint. They're not <laughs> far from... They are not far from Casey and um, George's. Almost. Come on, Aileen, uh, you got this. No, no. Almost in the same area where you have Casey and George's. Alpha. Alpha. Yeah, Alpha. yeah, yeah. Went, yeah Kara Grant she's went. still running, right? She's uh, she's overseas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's overseas. Um, yeah, she yeah she's still in the business. Yeah, she's still oh, running. Mm -hmm. Um, Akira Nugent. Here is that in Excelsior. Excelsior is right. She's doing exceptionally well. She's yes, doing she really is. well. Yes, yeah, she is doing. She's doing well. Oh, Did she her, switch like, universities? Oh, I heard. Yes, she switched. Oh, un university is doing. Um, oh, hurdlers are doing well. Oh, see, Kevon. Mm -hmm. Kevon just gave me a name. Kevon. Jahil Hyde. Jahil. Hey, Lloyd. Come on. Jahil Hyde. No. Jahil went to. He went to a school in St. Catherine. Oh, Jonathan Grant? No. no. More, to, more to Portmore side. He went to a school in Portmore. Oh, Bridgeport? Bridgeport, Bridgeport. yeah. Jay went to... That's where um, Leifer Green was went to Bridgeport before yes. he went to Casey. Yeah. Jay used to go Bridgeport. Yeah, Bridgeport High. Yeah. I remember him from Chance, yeah. He then yeah. moved to Walmart? No, he no. moved to Walmart. He no. went from... Kimberly, yeah. Yeah, Jail went to Bridgeport. Yeah, that's where he. Yeah, he never transferred. Hold on, Omar. Somebody Omar. say. Somebody say Jail went to Walmart. When Jail went to Walmart, Omar. Because when I was running, Jail was at Champs and Jail yeah, he was, was in class was he, one. He, maybe he, he transferred. He was maybe. transferred to. Hold on, guys, on the chat. Murphy, Jay. Oh, 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 oh. Thanks for the correction. Thanks for the correction. Murphy went to Bridgeport. Mur Hyde went to Walmart. Yes, oh. yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Murphy is uh, older he, than Hyde? The people on the chat, they are I think they're about the same they're age. They're on our okay. own. Thanks, guys, on the on the chat. Yeah. Yeah, Hyde is Walmart. Murphy is right. Bridgeport. Bridgeport. Yes, yes. Thank you for the correction, my people. Yes, 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 yes. Jay Hyde went to. Walmers and Murphy uh, went to Bridgeport. Yep, thanks for that one. Kimberly Williamson. Thank you, Omar. Kimberly Williamson. No, we have two Kimberly. We have Kimberly Williams. Kimberly Williams, who is the triple jumper. I'm familiar with her. Yes. She's very consistent. She has been one of our triple jumper for many, many I years. Mean, yeah. Williamson, Williamson, Williamson. It's a no, 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 not Williamson. Kimberly? Williams, Williams. Kimberly, Williams. Oh, Kimmy. Okay. Kimmy, yeah. Uh, Kimmy. Kimmy, yeah. <laughs> you see that smile on Ailey's face? Which this one? That smile on Amy. his face is giving you the answer for there. Kimberly Williams. <laughs> yeah, Kimberly Williams went to um went there. To okay. Thank you. Thank you guys on the panel. Sandra, um, Kevin, everybody correcting us with the Jails. Thank you very much. Yes, we I mixed up the Jails. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me see if I can find any other new, new one for Celine. New, new, new. I'm new. trying to think who's new. Amoy Brown. Where Amoy Brown went, Kevon? Yes, Amoy Brown. Homewood. Kevon, Kevon, where did Amoy Brown went to? Amoy, Amoy. Amoy? Is my, is my, no people, my, my people on the ch chat giving me Amoy Brown? No, Homewood. Homewood, she went to? Kevon. So. Kevon, Kevon, Kevon Bailey, please tell me where Amoy Brown went. Alana Reed. Heidel. <laughs> Heidel is right. Okay. Heidel is doing good. Oh, Amoy, they're saying Amoy Brown went to St. Diego. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Omar oh, and um, and Sandra. <laughs> Amoy Brown, I didn't pick up that one. 
Yeah. With Jago. Thank you guys. Thanks a lot. All right. More names. And then and then we wrap up with girls' chance. And of course, I want us to come back with the men. We're going to do a quiz, the women versus the men. You know, we want to do a final really? one. Yes. I cannot win against Davian. Are you crazy? <laughs> So I don't I'm not sure to me. What would happen to Davian me? is an elephant. He forgets I'm, nothing. I'm not sure. How am I Davian, supposed to compete with that? I'm not sure Davian will get to come back, but let me tell you, Davian massacre the guys, man. Let let Kevin tell you. Um mm -hmm. listen, Davian massacre the guy. Davian know all the athletes and where they're he from. has oh, like man. a plethora of knowledge. So hold on. Um Kevin is saying now saying I'm my brown went to Veer. Because I, I like, I feel the name sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. they're saying it's Vera, not saying Jago is Vera. Thanks okay. guys for the, 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 um, you see my, my viewers, you know, they are very sharp. Oh, Dwight see? Thompson, Dwight Bigger Thompson, not Thompson, Thomas, sorry. Thomas. Dwight Thomas. Run oh, the 100 and the hurdles, the sprint hurdles. Call him Dwight Bigger Thomas. Red is road. Red is road is right. Calabar. Akeem Blake. Where Akeem Blake went to school, Sandra? Jason? I know Akeem Blake. I think he went to school where? In St. Mary? No, it's not JC. Hmm. Javon Akeem. Blake went to Javon Blake went to um JC, but Akeem oh. Blake is an upcoming sprinter. Akeem, oh, so Akeem. Kevon is Akeem is a Cal Calabar, isn't it? No, Akeem is not Calabar. He went to Merlin Ati, right? Yes, right. Merlin Ati, yeah. He is oh, a yeah. sprinter. He made the world championship team last year with Johan and Oblique Civil. Which two schools Oblique Civil went to? Calabar and the first one. And the first one? The first one is from Central. And the girl's side is very dominant. That's the hint. Edwin Allen. Go on again. Home the next home home. Home. Yeah. He was oh, he home went to Homewood? Yeah, and then he came to Calabar in his last years. Antonio Watson. Petersfield. Petersfield is right. Petersfield. I like that these small schools have some good kids. Yes. yes. I like that. Yeah. Petersfield is one of the few smaller non-tradition champ school that seem to keep their athletes i don't know what they're doing how they're doing it but they seem to keep their um their top athletes because they were able to keep antonia watson they were Shaquina. able to keep shaquina foot they were able to keep alexis james so something is going on in the west and you know it would be nice if other non-traditional schools could continue the trend and keeping their athletes because we would see more champs would be more competitive both on the girls side right. and on the boys side but it it is kind of tilt right now because the schools with the resources can yeah. easily, easily go to a parent and say look i'm from calabar in kingston we won 28th boys championship we have boarding we will look after your athletes for the entire duration of their school their 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 junior years so if a parent is is poor why wouldn't she take up that offer mm -hmm. you know so it's it's it it's um oh and see somebody mentioning akira myri also i forgot that name you know so petersfield seemed to be keeping it's, their i like athletes. that yeah. yes and it's always yeah. a shocker when these small schools dominate i love that I love seeing like the smaller schools, you know. Yeah, I, even I, if they don't yeah. winning like titles, they're mm -hmm. winning coming in and grabbing an individual event. So yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um. See, um. Someone on the live was saying Peter Peter's field is actually declining as they have lost half of their team to scamming, and that's true. I've heard it on the on the news. I've heard it on local news in Jamaica. The coach said that a lot of his athletes didn't come back i don't know if his boys and girls are just boys but a lot of the athletes did not come back and you know they've taken that part and stuff so oh, wow. it's very unfortunate you know our I think it's financial i think a lot of those small schools need to um 
Yeah, the, the, it, it, it's tough in some areas because the parents do not have the resources. And, and this is why we cannot knock children for moving from one school to bigger schools because bigger schools can afford to house them. They can afford to feed them. They can afford to clothe them. They can afford to do everything. So, you know, it's... It's, it's, it's a very touchy topic, it's a very sensitive topic, but if I am a parent and I am poor and a big school approached me and said, look, we can develop your child's talent, you know, we can find housing for them and all of that, those things, you know, I am, I'm going to take it up. Alien screen look like it, um, Alien look like she freeze a little bit, but but in wrapping up, thank you very much, Celine. It was a good chat and, yes. a, good, and a good quiz. And um, I just want to let you, let you guys know that um, starting on Sunday, we will be having a uh, champs quiz. So don't, anybody who is interested, it's not about winning. It's just about the fun and things. So if okay. you want to be a part of it, um just let me know and i will include it will be a live thing like this and of course if you win your segment you move on until you are knocked out so i want as many people as possible to enter i'm writing the questions as we speak and all of this information so celine i would love for you to be a part of one of the quiz i know you have so I'm getting a out from the first round then? No, not necessarily <laughs> because you answer a lot of questions. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix it up. So I'm going to put, it is all about champs history. And of course, you know, the boys champs is over 100 years old. So I'll be putting um, old stuff with new stuff just to, but it is kind of a knockout round. So if like you and Aileen know, if you had won this round, you would move on to the next round and challenge somebody else and mm -hmm. until you get knocked out until. So we're going to have it starting Sunday. Sunday night is the first one. I'm not sure who will be on the quiz as yet, but Sunday night will be the first one. And then we will run it until next weekend. And, you know, just get some energy in and the chance thing up and everything. So Celine gear up yourself with chance history you know you know that chance and track and field work together so right got some homework to do yeah yes you have some homework to do to come back and i'll be asking different questions and i'll try to keep the questions as simple as possible because i want people to have fun no problem all right somebody keen say, bothering you about um abigail scar from saint mary high school oh <laughs> I didn't Abby. see that one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So Abigail, Abigail Scarf went to yeah. Saint Mary's. Went to Saint Mary's High. That's your mm -hmm. friend, right? That's your yes. friend. Oh, I'm sorry, Kino. I did not see that one. I'm sorry, Carrie. Carrie, can you? All right. Let me see some questions. Uh Carrie is saying Celine was on a roll at one point. Yes, she was. <laughs> she sure was. Um. Uh, Omar is saying Prince winning. Oh, he's saying Prince is winning the what class one something something. That's Gregor Prince, four hundred. Yeah, but, but I don't think Gregor Prince is still in high school. I haven't seen him all Not season. Sure. I don't think so. You know, Sandra, I want you to be a part of the quiz. Everyone on the chat, we will be having champs quiz. I hope you are listening to the questions. Hmm. I will be doing a champs quiz um, starting Sunday night, every every night starting Sunday. So please, oh my God, Sandra is asking what is the prize. Um, I don't have a prize as yet. I'm working on something. I'm not sure what it will be, but it is about fun and starting the energy for, for champs. So somebody's trying to join let me see what kevon is saying before we go i'll make sure they cut the lights on davian oh my god <laughs> kevon, you're not nice kevon want to cut the cut the light on davian because davian oh my god davian massacre the guys on monday night C celine was on a roll car she she did a cheat no celine wasn't <laughs> <cheating>. <laughs> 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 
So, guys, thank you very much for joining us on the live, everyone who were on the live. And as I said before, DM me or if you have my number, WhatsApp me that you want to be a part of the quiz. And Celine, thank you very much. And Aileen, who had to go, thank you very much for uh, Champs Corner, Memory Lane. Thank you so much, Celine. Anytime, HB. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you all.